This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get free access to Nebula, the streaming platform built by all your favorite YouTubers, when you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below. The world is full of valuable resources. Some are valuable because they produce energy, others because our ancestors found them a convenient medium of exchange. But there's one resource that stands above the rest, one that has allowed the continued existence of life on Earth. Water. Earth is known as the Blue Planet. Over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, but most of it is very salty. Humans require fresh water, which represents only 3% of the planet's total amount. Of that 3%, two-thirds are frozen in ice caps and glaciers, leaving just 1% of the water on Earth fit and available for human consumption. If that sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, it's because it is. Climate change and growing water consumption are rapidly depleting this vital resource, and that's leading to global tension. In this episode, we're going to discuss the consequences of our shrinking water supply and what we should expect in the coming decades. Let's start with some basic facts. Human civilization is heavily dependent on water. There's a reason 90% of human populations can be found within 10 kilometers of a body of freshwater. Over the years, some cities have misused their water supply or failed to consider its importance, leading to problems down the line. Mexico City is one notable example. Initially constructed by the Aztecs, Mexico City was once located on a large lake. Over the years, the Spanish drained the lake to make room for more buildings. And today, the city is home to over 20 million people and an acute water crisis. Cape Town, South Africa is another striking example. Beginning in early 2017, the city started to experience a severe water shortage, and over the following year, they became the first major metropolitan area to begin a countdown to day zero, the day they would completely run out of water and shut off the taps. This was quite a wake-up call to the people of Cape Town, and between strict government rationing of water use and an impressive response by the people, the city was able to push back day zero several times, and eventually stop the countdown altogether. But these emergency measures will not be enough going forward. More and more cities are facing water shortages, and the brunt of the suffering disproportionately affects poor people, those who are already living precariously. Water insecurity and inequality are only getting worse. According to an assessment by the UN, a full two-thirds of the world will live in water-scarce regions by 2025, which could displace as many as 700 million people. And by 2040, most of the world won't have enough water to meet demand year-round. We can get by without most resources, but we cannot live without water. A human being can only survive three or four days without water. It's non-negotiable. When a region experiences a water shortage, it starts a domino effect that can have disastrous consequences. Water scarcity leads to food insecurity as crops die and farmers can't irrigate their fields. Critical systems begin to fail, sparking violence, either internal between members of the affected population or external by their government to secure more water from contested sources. These are usually small-scale conflicts and often don't involve the use of military force. Fighting over water is not unheard of, but so far, there have been fewer than 30 instances of armed conflict over this precious resource. This number will increase dramatically in the coming years. So, what factors are causing these problems, and can we avoid them? A big part of the problem is climate change. As global average temperature rises, regional weather can become erratic and unpredictable. We are seeing more droughts, more wildfires, hotter temperatures, and less precipitation, often in already critically dry regions. As these weather trends continue, water reserves will dry up, and regions without the means to secure more water will face a serious problem. We all need to drink water to survive, but we also need to allocate water to produce food. Farming, especially less advanced methods, uses a tremendous amount of water. Growing necessary, region-appropriate crops is one thing, but we humans also have a tendency to demand food that is incredibly water inefficient. The king of these inefficient foods is beef. For each kilogram of beef purchased by the consumer, we spend 15,400 liters of water. Per cow, that's 2.7 million liters, more water than you'd find in an Olympic swimming pool. One comparatively easy way to conserve water would be to limit the amount of beef we produce. We in the Imperial Core have become accustomed to being able to buy whatever food we want whenever we want it. This comes with serious consequences, including the use of slave labor in developing countries and highly inefficient farming methods to produce crops we normally wouldn't be able to get in certain seasons. 
Considering the average American's carbon footprint and level of consumption far exceeds the global average, we need to be willing to make some sacrifices to help mitigate both climate change and stress on the dwindling water supply. The final factor that influences the availability of water is allocation of the handful of major freshwater sources around the world. There exist a number of critical rivers that provide water for huge numbers of people and vast expanses of farmland. And more and more often, the people towards the end of the chain aren't getting enough. The five big locations for control of water are the Ganges, the Nile, the Tigris and Euphrates, the Indus, and the Colorado River. I recently worked on a documentary about the state of the Colorado River, and the problems we face here in the US are pretty alarming. The Colorado River provides water for seven states, many large cities, including Los Angeles and Las Vegas, five and a half million acres of farmland, and over 40 million people. It's currently in its 20th year of drought. There is more water leaving critical reservoirs like Lake Mead and Lake Powell than there is flowing in. Lake Mead currently sits at 39% capacity, and Lake Powell at 36%. If the drought continues, and at this point people are having to seriously consider whether this is simply the new normal, a large portion of the US will run out of their reliable water supply in a matter of years. States like Arizona are having to start prepping for their own day zero countdowns. And tension between states and between urban areas and agricultural areas is becoming more severe. Each state wants to ensure they get their allotted water, and that's becoming more and more difficult. Fighting between municipal water providers and farmers is constant. The urban areas saying they use water more efficiently and provide water to a far greater number of people, while agricultural areas claim their farmland as their birthright and assert that they're providing a valuable service to the country by producing their crops. While farming is critical, we do produce a lot of crops in desert regions to accommodate spoiled Americans wanting certain foods all throughout the year, which requires an enormous amount of water. Water rights are an incredibly complex and fraught topic, but I suspect American farming practices will eventually have to change. But whether in the US or around any of the other key rivers, many of the disputes over water ownership stem from overuse of rivers, poor logistical planning, and the construction of dams or diversions, which downriver populations feel, often rightly, are preventing them from getting the water they need. This is especially common along the Nile, where Egypt often doesn't receive enough water by the time the Nile has passed through the nine nations further upstream. Regardless of where in the world these tensions arise, they all present a potential flashpoint for conflict, especially in regions where a water source is shared by nations with less than friendly relations. I'm sure many of you heard the vice president's recent statement about water. And here's the other thing, because I also, you know, I'm in a lot of meetings on foreign policy. You know, for years and generations, wars have been fought over oil. In a short matter of time, they will be fought over water. While it is striking to hear a politician admit that current wars are fought over oil and not to spread freedom and democracy like they so often claim, this is actually a 1995 quote by a former World Bank vice president. We've known for years that our water supply would become a point of contention in the next few decades, and we've done very little to mitigate the problem. In fact, just like with climate change, those in power have tried to find ways to monetize the suffering of others. The US is the most powerful country in the world by far. That fact has completely gone to our heads. And because of this, American leadership feels we have the right to invade other nations for literally any reason, or no reason at all. When we figured out we'd need more oil to maintain our dominance, the US invaded countries with large amounts of oil. The same will happen with water. We'll occupy countries where water conflict is starting to pop up, we'll claim we're there to maintain order and stability, and all the while we'll make the problem worse to feed our industrial war machine and quietly siphon off all the water we need. Then you've got individual billionaires like Bill Gates, who has finally gotten some recognition as the terrible person he is for trying to prevent free vaccine distribution in order to make even more money. The Gates family owns nearly 270,000 acres of land, most of it agricultural. If I were a betting man, I would assume that Bill's got some nefarious intent with the water rights on that land. Then, of course, we've also commodified water, and you can now speculate on water futures on the stock market. But we commodify everything, so this should come as no surprise. Though it does seem deeply dystopian to have wealthy people betting on drought severity while their fellow human beings suffer. If you put that in a movie script, the producers would say it's too on the nose. But this is the reality of the state of water precarity around the world. Reserves are drying up, key sources of fresh water are quickly becoming flashpoints for conflict, and imperialist nations like the US are gearing up to fight their next generation of wars over water. 
It's a shame to say that we really shouldn't have expected any different. The only goal of the imperial core and capitalist powers of the world is and always has been the maintenance of global domination and the exploitation of the developing world for their resources. Water is no different. It's a resource that everyone needs, and that makes it incredibly valuable. The water wars are coming. They won't be advertised as such, but watch where imperialist militaries end up. It's only a matter of time. If you'd like to learn more about what the world could look like as we approach day zero, I highly recommend you check out World Without Water on CuriosityStream. It's a sobering look at the state of water scarcity around the world, but it does offer a ray of hope. CuriosityStream is an established streaming platform with a solid track record of caring about great educational content and the financial security of those who produce it. They've got thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. As you probably know, YouTube doesn't treat its creators very well. That's why some of my YouTuber friends and I teamed up to build Nebula, so we don't have to worry about demonetization. As educational creators ourselves, we love CuriosityStream, so we've worked out a deal, where if you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below, you'll also get access to Nebula, 100% free. That's less than 15 bucks a year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula, which, in my humble opinion, is a pretty great deal. Since most of us are still waiting for the vaccine, why not spend some time learning about fascinating topics on CuriosityStream? Or check out Nebula's original content, including my upcoming series on the resurgence of fascism. You can also watch all my videos as they were intended, ad-free. There really is something for everyone, and by signing up at the link below, you're helping us produce more content without the fear of demonetization. Give CuriosityStream a shot, and get free access to Nebula when you sign up using the link below. It really does help support my channel and educational creators all across YouTube. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, consider subscribing to stay up to date with my latest episodes. If you hated it, go ahead and drop a thumbs down. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.